Okay, good evening everyone. Uh, my topic is almost covered by the previous uh, speakers, <laughs> uh, Dr. Rucha Mehta as well as uh, uh, Dr. Sunil. He made, both of them made, um, it made it umptainly clear that both sugar control and weight control is required. Now all I have to present to you is which is better, which at the end of this uh, 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 debate you will, uh, you will agree with me that GLP-1 receptor agonists are definitely better than SGLT2 inhibitors. So the topic over here so, is… Sorry to interrupt, we'll give you this time. Just uh, once again taking the poll, who are in fear of GLP-1 receptor agonist? Raise your hands. You can put it down. SGLT2 inhibitors. I think practically once again here the same. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> the experts have already told their <laughs> Anyway, why, why, why is this topic? So the topic over here is uh, 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 cardiovascular benefits for an uh, anti-diabetic drug. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So uh, it all it all uh, uh, it has started since 1999, uh, two decades back, where the management of diabetes shifted from glucocentric approach to a uh, holistic approach, where not just com uh, controlling glucose but also management of uh, other comorbid conditions, and most important amongst those being. Uh, the cardiovascular outcomes are supposed to be looked into when we manage our diabetic patients in our individual clinics. We all know this particular slide where definitely a person who, uh, who has diabetes plus a cardiovascular problem has reduced life expectancy. The prevalence of this cardiovascular disease as we see in our, uh, in our uh, 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 reviews are that uh, CVD causes one third or affects one third of our diabetic patient. It causes more than half of our patients to die, diabetic patients to die. That's the reason for their death in, 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 in diabetic patients. And amongst them coronary artery disease and strokes appear to be the major contributors. Because of all these factors taken together, there has been a lot of shift in the anti-diabetic medications that have that the guidelines have shifted them way up and down. And now the latest ones, sorry, the latest ones saying that right in the beginning, uh, once the patient is diagnosed with diabetes after lifestyle management and metformin, you need to choose between two major titans. Those are your uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist and SGLT2 inhibitors depending on whether the patient has a cardiovascular risk or is already having a cardiovascular problem and hence this clash of titans over here. The clash of titans between these two major drugs that protect your, uh, uh, that control your diabetes and protect your heart as well. Well, the equity in these two uh, uh, titans is not as much as ma jaisa, but yes, definitely there is a benefit in, in, in one over the other. And it, it, it's basically uh, 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 after metformin, that's a spade of AIDS, uh, uh, ace of spades. Uh, after that, you have to choose between these two drugs which will uh, benefit better as well. I'll stick to the point that the uh, drug that is better to the cardiovascular outcomes in our diabetic patients. If you see the trends in the coronary artery diseases that we see epidemiologically, we, uh, diabetes that is uncontrolled glucose that was mentioned by Dr. Sunil and weight, weight uh, gain or uh, that was presented by Dr. Rucha Mehta appears to be the forerunners in, in causing these cardiovascular problems. Hence, we require a drug that will reduce both these to a greater extent. Though on an outlook, they both look similar to each other, but ek thoda sa lamba hai dusre se, because you have a lot of cardiovascular benefits from GLP-1 receptor agonist, where you have metabolic effects right from reduction in inflammation, reduction in body weight, the importance of which has been told, HbA1c reduction, glucose variability, uh, dyslipidemia, and definitely uh, NASH or, or the reduction in the liver fat. All these result, uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist manages all these metabolic uh, effects resulting into outcomes from all the CV trials that I'll be showing. As far as glu glucose control is con uh, concerned, uh, 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 GLP-1 receptor agonist offers 63% greater HbA1c reduction as compared to SGLT2 inhibitors, that is empagliflozin, which is supposed to be the standard and the first one which was introduced and uh, which was shown in this Pioneer 2 study. 
there were uh, seven out of ten patients with on GLP-1 receptor agonists achieved con good control as compared to four by four out of ten in amphagliflozin group. Four times more patients at achieved HbA1c targets. So hence, at this particular point, GLP-1 receptor agonist appears to be leading as far as glucose control is concerned. As far as weight reduction is concerned, though, there is a, both of them have are almost equal amount of uh, on the weight uh, uh, on the face value have equal amount of weight reduction. The mechanisms are different where GLP-1 receptor agonist not has a both peripheral and central action in reduction of weight, hence resulting into 24 times greater weight reduction than SGLT2 inhibitors, 31% greater reduction in the waist circumference which also denotes your uh, visceral obesity. The weight loss with emphagliflozin is plateaued after 26 weeks but is persistently seen in GLP-1 receptor agonist. Also a point of importance over here is that SGLT2 inhibitors cause significant lean body and muscle mass loss as against to GLP-1 receptor agonists, which appears to be a bit of a detrimental effect in your diabetic patients. From here on, things change and these guys don't look eye to eye to each other. When you compare benefits which are seen on the top as against the caution and the problems that are seen with SGLT2 inhibitors more as, as, as seen on the slide. <coughs> and also, the Cochrane database of systematic reviews, which is which uh, has analyzed uh, more than 20 studies, uh, which have equal studies of both GLP and SGLT27 each, shows that GLP1 receptor agonist does have better outcomes in terms of CV safety, MACE reduction, atherosclerotic uh, cardiovascular disease, and apart from that, it also reduces stroke by more than 17 uh, percent and myocardial infarction by 10 percent. There is significant CV benefits with C GLP-1 receptor agonist in terms of better protection from non-fatal MI, better protection from non-fatal stroke, and better protection from CV death as well. If you look at the bunch of evidences from all the CVOTs of individual groups of uh, drugs, right from SGLT2 inhibitors to GLP-1 receptor agonist, the mean risk reduction in GLP-1 appears to be 12% as against <coughs> Uh, 10% from SGLT2 inhibitors. Also, if you compare the major uh, uh, studies, that is an Empareg versus your leader where liraglutide was used, it appears to be more consistent with liraglutide uh, uh, as far as 3P point uh, mace reduction is concerned, CV death, non-fatal MI and strokes are concerned. And as far as CKD patients are concerned, which also increase the risk of cardiovascular problems in your diabetic patients, uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists, though are not used as a preventive strategy, they can be used and they are approved for your e uh, patients who have EGFR less than 30 percent. Uh, From here, a bit of a back, uh, back uh, 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 kind of seat taken a bit in your heart failure patients from my, for my side, where uh, because of the diuretic effect of SGLT2 inhibitors, this is the only place where heart failure, where SGLT2 scores, I will tell right in the beginning over your SGLP1 receptor agonist. But as all of you will agree that the, the uh, heart failure per se in our diabetic patients is because of the cardiovascular problems that they have in, in per se. If you prevent the cardiovascular problems, you could actually prevent your uh, heart failure as well. No frills, if you come to the basics of everything without any uh, 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 to the bare minimum, if you have to choose between these two, it's a GLP-1 receptor agonists have ease of use, do not require e uh, EGFR monitoring or ketone mo monitoring, and do not, <coughs> do not require any management of antihypertensive medications as well. It is safe, there is no risk of hypoglycemia. Just last slide, sir. And, but the, the risk of amputation, volume depletion and fractures are seen more with SGLT2 inhibitors. So much so that right from May 2015 to right uh, up to 2018, there are a lot of uh, FDA warnings uh, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, given for SGLT2 inhibitors as compared to GLP receptor agonist. And last but not the least, the icing on the cake is 
the uh, systemic inflammation that is reduced as compared to emphagliflozin seen in this Pioneer 2 study to a greater extent almost to the 30% more reduction in the inflammation markers that uh, uh, results into good CV benefits. That's also. Awesome.